Hi, my name is Angela Percival and I'm the Senior Outdoor Photographer for Arcteryx. And we're here in Rogers Pass in Glacier National Park, just outside of Revelstoke in British Columbia. And Rogers Pass is an epic ski touring location and hiking location. And we've come here today to shoot um, an Arcteryx jacket. And as part of that shoot, I'm gonna take you on a bit of a journey um, as a photo workshop of the five elements that I use every day when I'm out here working to bring into um, the photos just to create the strongest images I can. So to start with, the way I kind of look at photography is that I see it as we have a toolbox to work with and within that toolbox are all these little tools that I can pull out at different times. Some of those might be camera techniques or things you can do within the camera. I have the weather, it's just started snowing all of a sudden. A minute ago we had the sun, that's another tool. There's atmosphere, there's like character. There's so many pieces within this toolbox and we're gonna kind of look at five of them today. So one of the first elements that I wanna pull out of the toolbox and talk about and go over is um, the concept of having a vision and executing on that vision. And vision's kind of a fancy word for really, in my mind, what's the pictures that are in my head and the ideas that I have and bringing that out and bringing it to life. And one thing I do um, is create a mood board uh, these days to come up with kind of ideas and put on some inspiring shots or even uh, like research of where we're going to go. Rogers Pass has this epic scenery and uh, I really want to celebrate how wild it is and how small we are in relation to that. So we've just got up to the ridge here. We don't really have our epic scenery that we were hoping for, but 95% of the days that we come out, you have to deal with cloudy weather in the winter time. But I get excited by that because there's actually a lot you can do with it. Um, so the first element is vision. And I do this kind of split that in two parts. One is the vision and the ideas, the ideation and coming up with the concept of what I'm going to do when I get out here. And then it's executing on that vision and, and why that's important, I think, to pre-visualize some of the shots you might want to get is it makes your time out here um, or on the skin track or whether you're with friends more intentional. And you have these goals in your mind of what you want to bring to life in your shot. So I've just seen one here as we've come up onto the ridge. Um, we don't have a lot to work with in terms of scenery, but the scenery right here in front of us is really beautiful. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put Greg, um, Greg's skinning his, the skin tracks up to here and he's just gonna skin up. And I've got these trees on the right here that I'm gonna frame um, in camera right. So I'll have him and the trees kind of like playing off each other on either sides of the frame. I thought about this kind of concept as like, if it's, if it's gonna be white and you know really foggy, what can we do? And I think we can really play off the elements. And there's this, or elements or features, there's this amazing tree island right there um, in amongst the white. So it's gonna be an image, hopefully there's gonna be a lot of white space. And then Greg kind of touring through, there's a little bit of a lighter version over here. So it's just making do with what we have. So I have my frame set up. He's not yet in frame, but I've kind of anticipated where I think he will go so that I'm ready when he gets there. Um, because I want to get him on a stride, on a skin stride, where he's like one leg's in front of the other, not where they're together. So he's coming closer, he's coming closer. I can focus on him, but I still have focus on the trees. I got one, two. So we got that shot. Uh, we kind of lost the light a little bit on the tree island, but maybe we'll come up or maybe we'll see something further up. So we'll keep, we'll keep moving. But this is really, this is kind of where things I think it, like it's challenging and fun and exciting. Cause this is hard, like these are hard conditions to shoot in. But if you can do something with what you have, you're always learning and you're always gonna create something. So the clouds are starting to part. So we're just gonna tour, keep going up the skin track and see if we find something else and maybe shoot into the sun now that it's coming out. It's so moody. We've got dark background. So we're just going to make the most of what's happening here. We're kind of losing that background a little bit, but Greg in the foreground and then kind of the big mountain in the background. Something that is really beneficial when you're out here and you're in the moment and there's so much happening and you really want to shoot is to know all your settings so well and to be able to operate your camera without having to kind of look down at it. So when I shoot Greg, even though the light's changing as I'm shooting, 
I can adjust my settings. My fingers kind of naturally go to the, the dials that need to change the settings within the camera. Because I would waste time if I had to constantly go down and go, where's that setting? So getting to know your camera um, as much as possible is a really, it sets you up for success when you get out here. Looking good. We've got a white skin track on white background. One thing I try and do while I'm shooting is think about a couple of different frames. So I'll go wide, I'll go in tight and just get another version. I even have an opportunity here to move him left of frame to right of frame. And then the picture even changes, like the further he moves up the skin track, the composition changes. I can also sh try and shoot vertical, which totally changes the look of the picture. And I can make the skin track come in from one side and kind of go out the frame on the other. Um, but there's so much to work with even just within this one scene. So what I love about this scene is it's really, really versatile. There's so much to shoot. The skin track makes the photo really interesting because it's already in someone's set it actually before he went up there. Um, so I'm kind of using it almost as a part of the composition um, to make it a little more interesting than just white on white. So I'm gonna follow him in here until he gets into my frame. So I've got him in focus. And there, he's right where I want him. So sense of place is really an important part of photography. It is otherwise called the establishing shot or the opening shot in like a print magazine. Uh, the reason I love it is because it's trying to bring all of this beauty and all of like how big this scenery is back to the viewer or the person looking at the picture. The, so the sense of place is combining the physical elements of a scene with the essence of a place. So sense of place in an image is really the foundation for um, a picture or a story. So before I go to shoot, I'm asking myself a few things about the scene. Like, what do I want to capture? What do I want to bring in and show the audience in the final picture? What's the light doing? What interesting features do we have here? Is, do we have patterns in nature? Do I have layers to the mountains? Do I have like sunset light there? Um, so I kind of try and cue a bunch of these questions to myself and then I focus in on a certain spot. Like we have something going on over here with some rocks and some light coming in and then I'll kind of narrow down. Like it's a really big scene. So if I choose to show all pieces of that, it could just lose that power. So I'll try and probably zoom in a little tighter on that and like almost isolate one element or a couple of mountains um, to make the picture stronger. When you try and shoot everything, you kind of lose the impact of the experience because I can look around here and I see 360 degrees, I see mountain peaks, um, but it's super hard to get that all in one photo. So I try and kind of isolate smallest sections of that and um, to be the strongest composition, the best light, we have some kind of um, brighter faces over here so I might kind of zoom in and shoot those. Let's go over and see if I can get a good shot of it. Creativity is one of the tools in this gigantic toolbox that we have and it's one of my favorite because it's so unique to every individual person and how they see the world and how they want to capture the world and within that um, umbrella of creativity is light and people talk a lot about the time of day which is amazing um, but I also like to look at the direction of light um, because a photo can be very different if I shoot this direction with the sun going down right now it's a very different photo than if I turn around and I see all this blue sky and kind of like a better day coming and so it can just be a matter of literally you get so focused on what's in front of you and all you have to do is turn around and look the other way and you can see a totally different spectrum of color um, the color of light is different it's a lot cooler over here and a lot warmer over here but we have the most amazing display of light going on um, here and I'm going to use that actually to really enhance the sense of place element. Uh, we're not going to see the whole entire vista of the scenery here in Rogers Pass today. The weather cards just aren't in our favor but we have waited and all of a sudden the sun came out for a last little glimpse, glimpse of the mountains and so 
I'm gonna shoot just this little piece here. I'm probably gonna do two different frames, one quite tight in on it, and just isolate one of those, like the mountain kind of on the left or the peaks in the middle, and make them really pop, and then one wider to create this, to get more of that sense of place with just how beautiful the light is shining through and hitting on those ridges. So I've got the landscape and there's still a little bit more light. So we're just gonna shoot Greg here coming up and I'm gonna backlight him um, against that bright scene. He's quite dark in the foreground. So I'm gonna kind of expose more for the light. So he's gonna be quite dark. So it's a bit more of a silhouette shot, but we're using everything we got here at the end of the day before we have to head out. Yeah, we got it. And there's still more to shoot. We still got snow on the peaks over here. We've got the peaks kind of coming up in the background. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder here. Still so much to do. So I've got a quick last shot here. Well, another shot. We should never say last shot. Um, I'm going to do it in three pieces. I'm going to shoot Greg coming up and utilize this side of the, the valley with the, the sun kiss on the peaks. And then I'm going to shoot it, um, him camera right, uh, camera left and get this mount in the background. And then I'm gonna just scoot it down a little bit and get the last piece of his skin up here um, and frame in that amazing mountain that we have over the back. So I'm gonna do it quickly before the sun sets. Oh, wow. Okay, I just got three very different shots in 20 meters of skin track in under five minutes. And that was just trying to move the position of the camera and change the scenery up. So we have three kind of options to look at later. And we're losing the last light of the day here, but we're making the most of every little second we've got. I'm just gonna shoot two last landscape shots. One of over here, the mountains, it's getting lighter really quickly. And the mountain we've been waiting for all day has finally come out. So Donald just has a little bit of sun on the top. So I'm gonna quickly snap that before it goes away. But we waited all day for this moment. We're starting off a story today. We're in Arges Pass and we're gonna shoot a picture here um, to bring into kind of a sequence of images if we wanted to tell a story in five shots or even with the product um, being a ski terrain jacket. I'm gonna shoot Greg skinning up uh, or putting his skins on at the car and putting his boots on and kind of getting ready for the day. So two ways I'm gonna to show to do this is with different kind of focal lengths. How I can change the depth of field to bring focus to the element that I want to support the story. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm shooting three different shots of Greg. One landscape, um, where I actually can't see the top of the mountain. Uh, one vertical, and that means I can get kind of Greg on the bottom end of the frame and the mountain on the top end of the frame. And what that does is it kind of creates tension between either diagonal corner. Just kind of trying to make the photo a little more interesting. Like I have a, a highway sign behind, and there's a point of a parking lot. Um, so just trying to create a little more interest in the picture to show where we are and where we're about to go. So I've switched to a 24 to 70. So I've come in closer and here I'm gonna put Greg like in the foreground and then the background, like the mountain is gonna be quite a bit further away. And what that does is it brings Greg as kind of like the hero or the, the element that I want the viewer to see. And then just to put him in context of the mountain environment. Okay, ready? When you're moving around in the mountains, you have time to look around, especially when you're on the, uh, the skin track. And it's so easy to get focused on what you're doing and where you're going and, you know, the conversation. But I kind of, I always like to keep an awareness of what's around me, especially when the weather's changing. But it's a lot easier to shoot when you have a bluebird sky, you have perfect snow and you can get a ski shot. But it, I think what makes you a really versatile photographer is when you're able to shoot in all different conditions. And it's almost like a superpower in the outdoors because you can use these things that you have, like the weather, if we had wind, if it was snowing, if it was rainy, you can kind of bring those into your photos and create more dynamic imagery. So as we were just skinning up here um, on our way to go skiing across the valley, we've got these moving clouds and they're moving quite quickly through um, the valley. And so it kind of creates a bit of a different atmosphere than if it was just completely blue sky. So I want to take the opportunity to stop and take a picture, like it's just a landscape, well not just, it's a landscape photo, uh, of 
these clouds because they've got a lot of depth to them. And the clouds also bring in contrast. They're visually interesting and it just gives you a stronger picture. So I'm going to shoot Sir Donald over here. You can see a couple of different lines as the wind takes the clouds through and then we have shards of light popping through. So if I can capture one of those, that'd be great. But if not, it's an amazing photo as it is just with the contrast and the darkness of those clouds moving through. So we're getting into the action now. We've skinned all the way up for like three hours skin up to get to this point. Uh, we've seen the light come and go and it's really just about to go. We're just gonna get a quick shot here. We're making the best of um, the situation that we have and that's a big part of the shooting for the in the outdoors. You kind of get what you get, which is part of the exciting uh, thing of shooting outdoors, I actually think, but it's nice when we get the amazing light, but you also, it's a really great test of your skills when you have hard or flat light to work with. So Greg's up here on the slope. He's just about to ski. I'm gonna kind of follow him down. I've got a couple of things in mind, like there's some interesting features on the slope that I'm gonna try and frame with him. Um, this is kind of shooting on the fly in a way. Like I'd rather have a shot that's focused. I know exactly where he's gonna turn, but that's just not how it works out all the time. And this is more of what it is. And I think that's what makes photography really exciting is the challenge of trying to get a good shot with what you have to work with. So let's see how we go. You know, that's a great, <laughs> nice one. What? Nice one. That's such a great example of when you just never want to stop shooting. Like my shot for him was further up and I was thinking, yeah, he was going to get a couple of nice turns, which was great. But the shot actually might well have been the last turn he did down here. So you kind of never want to take your camera away from the action. You always want to keep focused. So what went from like a big alpine ski line to a tight pow shot with his like pole poking through. So I think we did a good job, don't you, for what we had to work no, with? No, that was pretty good. I would like... We're not going to get the light, though. I was going to say go back Well, we up. could still hope for the light, but we just had this crazy wind storm come in as we were setting up here, and now all of a sudden, like, Greg was up there. You couldn't even see him. It was so burly, the wind. It was coming up behind Anthony, the filmer here, and literally, it stopped. We're at the last light of the day, and we've worked hard today to really try and get some good shots. The light's been pretty challenging, and it's really windy and really cold. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of exciting, but it's also really <laughs> uncomfortable. Um, that's part of being an outdoor shooter. I'm gonna get a shot of Greg here. He's about to ski behind me, and I'm gonna pick him up as he skis. I'm gonna get him to do continuous turns, and what the advantage of that is when you're shooting skiing is that a skier, or it could be a biker, it could be a runner, they kind of get into the flow of their action, and instead of just doing kind of a one turn, they're kind of in motion, and it, um, they just kind of have better body positioning. It looks more natural than if I just got him to do kind of one hook turn. We do shoot those and those are really popular, but there's a kind of a different style of shooting for that. When I have a really wide scene here, I'm gonna let him ski. And then I kind of have in my mind, like in my vision, what I wanna do, like have him on one side and the rocks on the other, but I'm just gonna track down with him and follow him and then almost on the fly, find what I want and shoot. But that the benefit, with knowing your settings is in that moment, I can really um, focus in on them. And knowing your camera, not just your settings, but your camera as well. Um, I can focus, I can change if the light changes quickly before he's about to drop in. So really know your camera is key for action sports photography. It's not, it's not gonna be our cover shot, but we, this is what true professional does, is you just have to do, you have to make the most of what you got. We just keep trying stuff and actually this another thing to bring in uh when shooting the action is really the creativity part is you got that toolbox which tools are you going to pull out when you don't have many options in there and in that we kind of went a bit tighter so you're trying to eliminate a bunch of the busyness that's going on and really focus in um, to make a str stronger and more interesting picture there's so many things you can do when shooting action or the action in your story to make it more interesting. 
And the first thing I kind of think about is um, what is the key moment and be prepared for that. And where do I want to put the turn? Where do I put the, want to put the skier or the biker or the climber in relation to the other outdoor elements that are out there, whether it's trees or rocks. And we're going to shoot a picture here. There's a white slope. I mean, the scenery, is, you can see it. The scenery, there's so much to work with at here. You kind of spend days, even when you don't have the light, picking out little pieces, just kind of breaking it down into smaller chunks. And I found this little tree over here. There's a lot of busyness going on. I per personally prefer to shoot images that are a little more simple, a little more clean. I don't want to put tons of clutter in there. Um, and I think that's actually the role of the photographer is to, it's almost as important to put in your screen as the things that you leave out. So I try and cut out all of the clutter. I don't want that in there. I really want to make it as simple, clean and isolate the action so even if he's far away he's going to be really small in this shot you can still see uh, what's going on and that sets it apart from the really tight in action where you're kind of up close and personal so I've got a tree here and again I'm going to try and frame Greg and the tree um, in juxtapos like kind of in tension with each other because that's what we've got to work with it's really flat light we're about to shoot we've kind of waited for a couple of minutes but we don't really have anything coming so we're gonna shoot, move on. Um, I am gonna take this photo anyway. And what happens here when it's really white, uh, it's actually tends to be hard to kind of focus on the skier coming in. So I'm actually just gonna pre-focus on the tree and then uh, Greg will hopefully ski within my frame. Let's see. Okay, Greg. Some amazing conditions going on here and these are kind of the moments I just asked Greg to wait for a second these are kind of the times where that toolbox I dig super deep into it we got pretty flat light all around but I really want to get a shot of Greg coming up and doing a transition before we ski down and I will say that sometimes when it gets tough like this you got to find the tools that will produce the best possible thing in this situation it's kind of being annoying coming up as a sideways wind and it's like kind of howling and it's really cold so I'm actually gonna try and use that to my advantage because it on the other side it actually makes it really fun and really dynamic and it brings me a kind of I see the weather as being pretty emotional and these kind of moments it brings in that emotion that you cannot create any other way than just by being out in the outdoors so we're gonna shoot this shot before everyone gets too cold um, I'm going to shoot it with a wide, so like a 24 to 70 I have in my pack here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to put Greg up close. I'm going to shoot a shallow depth of field at like 2.8 um, to make him pop from that really white background out there. And then I'm going to get I'm going to get him skinning. So it's going to be an action shot first. And we're going to move pretty quick here and do a couple other shots. I'm going to get him taking off his skins and kind of changing over, probably putting on his jacket to ski down. Um, this is how fast it works when we're out here getting it done. Probably should take off my lens cap, it's a good start. Okay, so turning my camera on. One trick is to be able to pull your camera out of your bag or from around your neck pretty quickly and be able to shoot with it right away because that you can miss a moment um, in seconds if you're not kind of ready and you're like figuring out which lens, but as I was skinning up there, I was thinking about what I was gonna do when I got here. Um, it's a little windier than I thought, but that kind of makes it exciting. So as he's coming into frame, my plan is to put him, um, kind of when he comes up on the last part, not so much, he's quite far back. If I had a long lens on, I would shoot him where he is right now. But because I've got the 270 in anticipation of when he gets closer, he's gonna be much bigger in the frame. So I'll get kind of ready make sure my settings are good. We're losing light, so I've actually gone up um, to 400 ISO, it's been at 200 for most of the day. And here he's coming in. Get a couple of quick snaps while he's got, um, well, there's, the background is pretty neutral there. Come on up. Ah, oh, yeah, great. What? Really great. 
can you come to here? And then I'm gonna back up a little bit just because he's quite close to me now and I still wanna get some of that background in even though we're losing a little bit. Um, but we're gonna have to work fast otherwise in a second we're gonna be in full wide out. <sighs> this is the real, this is the real world. This is what it is like to be an outdoor photographer. Okay. And that's how quickly it can change and you kind of have to adjust and go with it. Like when I first came up, we could almost see that mountain Cheops in the background and now it's almost gone. So you're kind of thinking on the fly and you're going to shoot really quick. And I'm going to move just over here to get a bit of a different angle at him. Um, so we'll just come on over, get some verticals, like mix up the frames a bit. He's still got a bit of time. If you guys can see in there, kind of what my frame is. And the wind comes in, which is my favorite part. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move in closer to him and get a little more details. Okay, come in for the next blast and we'll get some more emotion. Oh yeah, that's a good shot. His poles have blown over. Good, okay, I just wanna get one. I'm gonna do, oh. I look super attractive. <laughs> I think I just got wind blasted all on the side of my face. Feels like it's. Look at me. It's, uh, I feel like I've got frostbite. I got an ice cream headache, but I shit you not, that was one of the best photos we've got of this whole day. So it was worth it. I actually feel like I can't even move my cheek right now. It's so frozen. <laughs> but this is really what I love about my job. It's coming up here and having these wild moments. Memories are created, and we've come away with some great photos. So I'm gonna take this opportunity um, here to take a portrait of Greg. And the one thing I wanted to pass on or share with portraits and is bringing like emotion into your shoot can or into your photos can come through a couple of different ways. We just had the weather come through so it can come through the elements. It can come through people, it can come through a character. Um, and I think what emotion does is it gives you it creates the tone of an image or a set of images. And I'm gonna shoot Greg's portrait here because it's quite wild, the weather, and we've just skinned up. And the lights actually, it's getting darker, but it's still bright enough that I'll be able to get his face in um, the hood. And I've changed lenses. I put on a 70 to 200, because I kind of, I'm just gonna, sorry if I block the camera here, but Greg has, He's happy to be out here, so he's kind of got happy emotion. He's skinned up here. He's got <laughs> soaked emotion. I'm gonna move in just a little bit closer and get a closer shot of his eyes because so much emotion comes through your eyes. Got it. Okay, awesome. Okay, we got it. We got lots of good shots today. The wind's picking up a lot, it's getting dark. It's really time for safety wise to get out of here. I could shoot till the sun goes down, but we've got a long way to go to get back to the car. So it's time to say that's a wrap for today.